Hey guys, Jesse here. And today I just wanted to share my first diorama with you guys, the final shot from the anime Mobile Suit Gundam. Uh, in this scene, Amuro Ray has abandoned his battle worn and battle torn RX 78 2 um, and left it on autopilot to fire one last final shot at his rival Char Aznabel, who also left his mobile suit or mobile armor. I can't really remember what its official classification was. Uh, the Zeong, uh, to fire a final shot at the RX-78-2 as well. So it took me about a week to do this diorama, and I'm quite proud of it, so I just wanted to share it with you guys. So let's take a look. And here it is, the final shot diorama I completed. Uh, please excuse the lack of a photo studio and the sort of freehand camera. Uh, it's the only way I can really get around this thing without knocking into uh, lights and stuff. So we're in my sort of uh, work area. But anyways, this kind of gives you a sense of the scale of the thing. Um, the best thing I have with me right now to compare it to is a Pez dispenser. So, I mean, you can kind of get an idea of how tall this thing is. Um, but yeah, it's the... RX 78 2 high grade uh, revive kit. That's the kit I chose to use, and the reason why I chose to use it, if you hadn't seen my review, is um, it's the only kit I know of that can pull off the arm straight up in the air that goes along with the shoulder armor uh, with any without any sort of modification. So, yeah, so that's why I decided to use that. Um, so, the sort of process I took when creating this diorama was. I started with the mobile suit, so I took this thing, and uh, first I did was of course I built it, right? Uh, took off the head, took off the left arm at the sort of upper armor part. Um, that piece up there that's kind of black, uh, you know, I was kind of fortunate that they designed this in a way that that piece stayed in there. It just it's exactly what I wanted to fill in that sh uh, shoulder. Uh, area otherwise it would just be an empty shoulder and look pretty bad and I'd have to mod it but thankfully that piece is just sort of there um, I removed those that black part on the head is the poly cap uh, I just sort of cut that down until I got to the hollow part so fortunately the high grade uh, poly cap neck joint they use uh, has a hollow area about halfway through the hollow, uh, poly cap so I just sort of cut until I got to that part. Uh, I'll explain how I did the wires in a second. But anyways, uh, so I took those apart. Uh, then I went on to do my sort of regular battle damaging techniques. Uh, I made a video about it before. Uh, let me just spin this thing around. Or not a video, but a series of video of, of how I do battle damage. Uh, you can see I repainted the thrusters there. And... Um, did some bronze detailing just to give it a, a more mechanical, realistic feel. Uh, I kind of wanted to find a middle ground between anime accuracy and realism with this thing. So um, that's why the I'll explain about the, the sort of landscape in a second why it's not super detailed and why this thing, you know, I, I didn't go out and try to find any decals to put on it because I, I kind of wanted to keep it faithful to the anime in some respects. Anyways. Um, yeah, so I just went on. I did the battle damaging with a Dremel and uh, Actually, I was about to say soldering iron, but I actually skipped the soldering iron. I just used my Dremel uh, You know nicked it up used a very very tiny uh, Drill bit to get those bullet holes You can see some there on the red part and the blue and the yellow and definitely on the shoulders all located on the front um, and, you know I don't think this thing would have survived any shots to the back. Uh, I tried to make it as subtle and realistic as possible. Um, even did some damage on the gun itself, the beam rifle. Uh, then I went ahead and did my regular paint techniques, just dry brush silver, uh, dry brush black, uh, and then go into the cuts and scars with black and silver. Uh, and then use some Tamiya weathering kits to... Uh, give this sort of stain on the back of the legs and sort of open ports um, that area right there with that uh, where there should be a hole right there 
I filled in with a gray piece and that gray peg I actually cut off from the arm uh, from the left arm that I took off so the left arm had a peg that pegged into the arm I uh, just cut that off and stuck that in there luckily it was the same size I was very fortunate because um, otherwise I would have had to cut the peg off the shield um, and I kind of wanted to reuse that shield for some other kits so I sort of lucked out there but yeah cut it down to the perfect size and glued it in there kind of didn't want a big empty hole there um, sorry about that trying to just readjust with my hand yeah so did that right top coated it made it look good uh, glued down a lot of parts um, uh, let me think let me think uh, I super glued down the wrist because the wrists on the on this kit are very very loose uh, so I see I got it down into its straight up pose I wanted and super glued the wrist in there super glued the beam saver and super glued the backpack to the back uh, did not super glue anything down here because I did want some mobility in there just in case it gets knocked or something I didn't want it to snap off the base um, so so you know didn't didn't super glue anything down there all right so for the wires um, they're held in there with clay uh, took some modeler's clay, the kind of dry in air, and stuffed it in there. Uh, there was a big hole in that arm, in the shoulder, that allowed me to stuff quite a bit of clay. Uh, this top part was so frustrating because there is a very minuscule amount of clay in there, but just enough to hold those quote-unquote wires. Um, the wires are a combination of paper clips, and um, I found it at Walmart. They just called it craft wire. I found it in gold and in silver. So that big silver piece is a paper clip. Just cut that off and stuck it in there. And those two gold ones are that craft wire. That red one, I'll explain in a second. Let's just take a look at the one down here. Um, same deal. Uh, that gold one's a craft wire. That silver one, the smaller one next to the gold one's a craft wire. And that big one's a, a paper clip. Now the red, I believe both of those are craft wires. Mm. That's, that one might be a paper clip, I honestly can't remember. But anyways, what I did was I took those and I just spray painted them uh, clear red. And it gives a very convincing sort of cable. That makes sense. I wanted some variety in the cables in the head. I didn't just want silver and gold. I mean, they had to have designated different cables to do different things, right? <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah, so I got the clay in there and then I waited for the clay to dry and then painted it. Um, as you can see... Painted the, the poly cap and the clay all black. Uh, painted, I'm not really going to get all the way down, but in there the clay is painted black. I actually repainted this poly cap on the arm. That poly cap and the ball joint uh, with the Gundam marker, this sort of metallic um, gray, very dark gray. Uh, gun metal almost. Uh, yeah, that, that light gray for the joint looked really, really weird. It really looked like plastic. But yeah, so that's the most So I did all that. Oh, and this this is just a beam saver that came with it. Um, I'd like to say that I just stuffed that in there, but I didn't because it wouldn't fit. So I had to, as you can see, I had to shave it down a bit and to get it to the correct size because I wanted to go all the way into the beam saver. I could have just glued it at the top there, but yeah, it is super glued in there. But I wanted it to get all the way into the barrel without warping the end, so I had to shave it down. It's a little rough, but... Um, I'm pleased with it. But anyways, so moving on to the bottom. So next thing I did was um, create the the base. So I took that wood. So I did it wrong the first time. Um, that clay terrain there is the second attempt. The first attempt, I did the clay onto the wood. Um, and then I realized I needed to paint the wood this sort of walnut. So I took the clay off and let that harden. Um, painted the wood, they came back and tried to super glue it. I know you guys are probably laughing, some of the more crafty people, arts and crafts people. Um, yeah, I tried to super glue that clay to the wood and that didn't work. Uh, it just crumbled and yeah, it was terrible. So, started over. Uh, you know, got this this nice walnut color. It used to be that sort of uh, light, light brown wood, very raw wood color, um, beige. Then I reformed the terrain with clay, same modeler's clay I used for the head and arm. Um, just, you know, formed it around, uh, tore it a bit, stretched it out in places, and 
and stuck it onto the the wood base I made sure to sort of conform it around the wood here I did want it seeping off so it sort of looked like it it was um, blending into the real world uh, it didn't come out exactly like I planned it kind of looks like goop at places which is fine kind of looks like volcanic rock which is fine but in any case uh, just wanted to make sure it stayed on, it dried to the wood so it wouldn't just crumble off when I tried to um, touch it or anything. So that's on there, good. Also when it was soft, I I had my rocks cut out, which I'll talk about in, about in a second, and I pressed them in there to create like uh, imprints of where I wanted the rocks to be so that they would lie flat. So yeah, so um, for, the, for the terrain, for the painting, uh, just did a very, very dark uh, gray as a base, then um, a black wash to fill in the gaps and cracks and stuff, then a very, very light gray uh, dry brush. And you can kind of see, that's what kind of gives it that variation in gray. Um, and again, I wanted to stay faithful to the anime, and in the anime, uh, there's no real rubble, rubble or anything, it's very, very smooth, very rocky. Um, I also wanted the focus to be on the mobile suit itself. So moving on to the rocks, um, as some of you might be able to tell, these are indeed foam, but I didn't just carve them out of a block of foam, I actually used expanding foam. Uh, it's the same sort of foam you use for filling in gaps and cracks in your house or for insulation. Uh, you can find it at any hardware store, just ask for expanding foam. But the nice thing about expanding foam is it gives these really nice rock shape formations when it dries. Um, you just spray down a little bit of it, wait for it to expand overnight and dry, and then you get some really nice rocks. A lesson I learned from this build is that expanding foam really does expand. Uh, the name does not lie. I made way too much of it. Uh, I'll splice in a picture here of how much I actually made. Uh, the rocks you see here are about maybe 20-15% of the foam I actually made. <laughs> so next time uh, I'll know just to spray a little bit of it. But as you can tell, um, they've got like cross and hatch marks in them. Um, basically, let's see if it's more light on it, there we go. Basically I just went at it with a steak knife, um, did a lot of vertical, should have did more, I'm sorry, I did a lot of horizontal uh, gashes and angled gashes. Maybe I should have went a little more vertical because they look a little unrealistic with the cross hatching effect, but I'm quite pleased with them. They're supposed to be asteroid rocks. This one came out really nicely actually. That one looks really realistic, but they're supposed to be asteroid rocks, so the only thing that's really eroding them would be impacts from other rocks. <laughs> um, did a, so after I, I went at it with a steak knife, um, did a dark gray uh, base coat on it, uh, darker than uh, the clay here. So I kind of wanted the rocks to stand out a little bit. Um, then did a black wash, then a light, light gray dry brush, and then a white dry brush. And you can kind of see it maybe here where the white really stands out. I think it looks really good. And at the base, um, at the edges of each rock, I just did black over it. So just black. I kind of let the foam... The nice thing about the foam is it absorbs the paint a bit. So you get a really nice and smooth paint job. No real air bubbles or buildup of paint. So yeah. Even painted the back. You'll never see. I just didn't want any sort of foam coloring to um, kind of peek through while you're looking at it. But you are meant to look at it from the front. And maybe the sides. But yeah, I think it, it looks pretty good from the back too. Yeah. But again, I wanted the focus to really be on the mobile suit itself, and I think it came out really, really nice. So yeah, there's the uh, final shot. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I just hot glued all this down. So all these rocks are all hot glued down, and the feet of the... Gundam are hot glued down, so he's not going anywhere. He's he's there for life. But there he is. Final shot. So I forgot to mention that before I hot glued the Gundam onto the base, I did a top coat of matte 
uh, spray over the rocks and the clay. I uh, glued on the rocks first, then did the top coat on everything, so that you know, I like, wouldn't be able to scratch off the paint. But anyways, uh, yeah, again, I'm really proud of this uh, diorama. I think it came out really well. Uh, some of the things I learned were just the ma how the materials I used uh, work, you know, how those expanding foam rollers work, and um, you know, the sort of characteristics of it. Same goes for clay. Um, the Gundam is something I've I, mean, I have experience with all that, so that that was nothing really new. This was really fun, so you know it wasn't a waste of time. There's no such thing as a waste of time if you're having fun. Um, some of the criticisms I've had on this uh, from other people who have seen this is that uh, one thing the stance isn't wide enough, and I agree the stance isn't wide enough, but I couldn't really get the stance wider than it was or than it is without having the feet uh, be f not flat and having the feet flat was a priority over the wideness of the stance. Uh, I didn't really want to fudge it uh, where I would have the stance wide enough but the feet are sort of angled. I didn't want this thing to be balancing on the side of its feet. Uh, like I said, I could have fudged it by filling in uh, the clay up to the feet was it was flat against something but I think it would have looked a little odd. I wanted to look like it planted itself down and fired straight up. So I'm fine with the stance. Uh, and that, the other criticism, the two other main criticisms I've had and I touched on it in the video is that uh, the clay seeping over looks a bit strange and I agree I would do that differently if I had to do this again and the cross hatching on the rocks. But aside from that I, I love this thing. <laughs> I think it looks great. Um, I wanted to do it at this scale for a while now, um, but I just had to wait for the right RX-78-2 to come out. Um, I didn't really want to do a master grade thing. I didn't want something that was a mantelpiece. I wanted something that I could sit on my desk or sit on a, a small shelf, you know, like, a, like a small scene cut out from the anime um, in diorama form. I guess that's sort of the point of dioramas, right? They're supposed to be this small miniature representation of a real world scene. In this case, fake world scene, whatever. But in any case, yeah, it, it's a really pleasing thing to have on my desk now in my workstation. So thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.